All right, so this is a viewer request. We're going to be doing a ball joint. Now, these present some pretty unique challenges. If you're using Boolean ingon workflow, they'll have its own caveats to it. We're going to be doing subdivision in this one, but they're great learning objects. These little mechanical devices like this are excellent. Something I want to mention about subdivision workflow, it's actually the least accurate form of modeling, but it delivers some of the best looking results although they're not technically mechanically as accurate, right? Uh, standard polygonal modeling can be extremely accurate, but unfortunately that means you got to use a lot of segments and faces and things like that. And so ultimately this is why people use CAD software. Uh, I don't remember the exact terminology for all the different algorithms and terms and everything, but basically CAD software uses either like NURBS or uh, like T-spline uh, type geometry and stuff like that. So meanwhile in Blender, polygonal for the most part and then sub d is a subset of polygonal which is uh, less accurate than regular polygonal modeling believe it or not with that in mind uh, this shape i'm going to show you something here in pure ref this is the pure ref program right you can download this create mood boards and then save it somewhere so you always have all these references you need it's the easiest way of working uh, if you have two monitors you throw it on the other monitor right and um you can always look at it at any time. You don't have to have little windows with tiny little images and stuff like that. Uh, but you can select an image, in this case, this one. Double click on it, it zooms in, right? Uh, but you can select it, right click, save, export, and then uh, select the image, export it to wherever you need to export it. I'm going to go to the desktop and export it out. Okay. Oh, click export here. There you go. And so. Um, already had a go at this this is what I ended up with we're gonna start over went through it a couple times make sure we don't have too many hang-ups here while doing this you will run into issues as you're sub demodeling and you're getting used to working with it and learning it uh, but something I want to point out here real quick before we import that reference image is that when you subdivide a cube you press control 1 or control 2 control 3 whatever subdivide like so and uh, we're gonna apply this real quick okay it's smooth and but when we look at the wireframe, look at this corner right here. That's where the corner of the cube was. Uh, the corner of a cube naturally has the same kind of topology here with three edges, right? Okay. And that's occurring right here. But now we got these little quads kind of tightened up and rounded out. So we still have that end pole. Pay attention to your mesh. I've talked about this before. But um, basically, if you subdivide a triangle, and you can, uh, we'll do a level one here apply it Does that look familiar these are virtually the same thing here and so when you pay attention to these end poles it's going to help you out a lot but also if we were to create a um, an ingon so i'm going to subdivide one edge so we got an ingon and now we subdivide the whole shape and apply it this creates another type of pole generally speaking and so simple ingons and triangles are actually useful while subdivision modeling uh, because when you do subdivide at one time and then um, the algorithm was applied to it, the Catmull-Clark algorithm, right? Uh, these all turn into quads technically, although they're all meeting up here at the center, and this creates an e-pole. So while you're working, pay attention to these things because your edge flows usually go through these kinds of little points here. And um, you, you'll find that if you start paying attention to like how your mesh looks flat on a plane, you'll start seeing it in 3D. So when you do create a sphere or a cube or something, you'll start seeing these kinds of little repeating patterns that happening and uh, how your edge flow runs in and out of them and all that other fun stuff. And then you'll also know how they're going to subdivide and turn into polygons later on. And so then you'll understand when you can actually use triangles or simple ingons. Complex ingons with lots of little edges, not usually a good idea, but they can still be used sometimes in some situations. We'll do that here in this video too. Um, so... This is also what some people call a quad sphere, as opposed to the other types of spheres. So it's things like UV spheres, right? UV spheres, when you create these, uh, they have poles at the top, the bottom, right? Big N poles, or uh, E poles, should I say? And um, that's okay in certain situations because you might be making like a hand grenade or something, right? Or you only need to cut out one side of this, perhaps. And then you can do things like this, right? And so when that subdivides, it does this number. Cool. But we have the problem with this being like this on the other side. And so this is a problem. It just starts to look really bad. As a result, sometimes you want to use quad spheres. Okay. 
once that's out of the way, when you subdivide this cube, it's technically not a sphere. Uh, you actually need to use a cast modifier. Okay, and that's going to round it out just a tiny little bit. It's hard to see it, but it just rounds it out a little bit more. And that's going to be more accurate. Okay, but like I was saying earlier, it's, it's not always possible to be accurate. Right, so let's get rid of this thing. Let's delete it. Um, we're going to actually press Shift A, create quad sphere using machine tools add-on. And uh, we'll zoom out. We'll look at it like this. We can actually change the subdivision amounts. And in this case, this was a little too low res. We want something more like this. Simpler is usually better, but sometimes you have to take it up and go a little bit more complicated uh, off the start. It just depends on your object. In this case, this is going to work out well for us now, and that's not going to be a big deal. Okay. Now, let's actually bring in that reference image real quick. So I'm going to press Shift A in the side view here. So while orbiting, hit Alt on X. Shift A, we're going to create image, reference image. We'll find our image. There it is. And we can bring it in. And just like that, it's a setup pretty much. We need to press G, X in this case. I like to do this personally. This is optional. Um, but I'll go to visibility under this tab, right? And uncheck selectable so you can't accidentally move it and stuff like that. You can only select this. Okay. Uh, also, this is something I've been doing and I, I think it's quite useful. I'm going to go to the UV editor tab, UV editing tab, and um, load up that image by clicking the little icon and blam. Uh, under image, I'm going to click pack. Okay. And then I'm going to save this file. This is going to be my third try at doing this for today. And um, so once that's done, the image that was exported wherever on your doc, uh, desktop or in a file or a folder, you can delete it. It's still in your mood board, but now this image is saved in your Blender file because it's packed into it. You don't have to uh, have a bunch of little stragglers everywhere. So this is quite useful if you don't want to have a bunch of things compounding together because generally speaking, I want everything nice, neat, and organized. So if I just load up all of my uh, reference images into a mood board, it's much better for me having my reference images as part of my blender scene is also useful for me uh, i don't always like to pack everything else though because you could pack in textures and things like that but i don't actually prefer packing the textures that's just personal preference i guess but anyways with all that out of the way let's go back to layout let's go hit alt go back to that side view alt z uh, this reference is really great even though it's kind of low resolution uh, the reason it's so great is because it has cross sections and so it, whenever you're doing any kind of mechanical objects, if you can find those little cross sections, perfect. Because now we know exactly where the center of this thing is. We don't have to guesstimate anymore. And we can actually scale this to size however we need it. Uh, we're also going to be subdividing this. So we'll go back to the modifier list and uh, hit Control 1. You'll see we lose volume. So you need to scale it up a little bit larger. Press in our scale right here. I like to zero it out. So Control A, apply scale. Uh, that way we don't run into any issues with that later on if hopefully right and um, this is flat on one side unfortunately if we were to just knife through this real quick you'll see that um we have to cut across these these uh, wires here right or these edges so k c a we're going to do it just like that bam and all of this stuff down here i don't need it i will delete it okay now there's going to be some play in here no matter how you try to do this, is at least the way I've done it right now, uh, it's going to be kind of complicated because basically, and if you don't have the inside sections as transparent, you turn on back face call in here, right? But basically, I need this edge to go all the way down to this area to hold that cylindrical shape. There's a couple ideas on how you can do this. Um, you could potentially um, like subdivide here and then do a join and do something like that. That might be something you want to do. There's another option available, which is you could try to um, align to the bottom here, right? But it's going to shift things out of proportion just a tiny little bit. Um, you can also try doing GG twice to slide. If you start sliding a vertex and you hit Alt, you can actually slide it back the other way as well. Okay, so you can do things like that. So it's going to come in at a little bit of an angle. And, uh, but there will be some play here. There's, there's no way to get around that. I think personally, this is probably the most accurate. Uh, you might want to do something like that. And you're, you're probably sitting there wondering why not just um, merge it all together and then use loop tools. We're going to use loop tools anyways, but uh, the thing is, is that loop tools, I'm going to control X and dissolve those vertices. 
the thing is that loop tools, as good as it is, now when you do that, it's actually going to shift all these other ones. And you'll see what happens here in a second. But we did this one. We want these other ones to match. Now, fortunately, the way we have this set up, we have a symmetry line here. We have a symmetry line here. So we can do mirrors. Uh, we can use modifiers to do this. We'll put it above the subdivision surface. And usually I use mesh machine for this, but I just want to show you how to do it this way. And so you can see right now we are going to go um, basically across Y here. We're going to bisect it. You can see uh, we might have to mirror it this way. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing on, um, once we do that, we should be able to do it on X as well. Bisect it, and there we go. Okay, so it's going to clean that up a little bit in that manner. That's using the mirror modifier. You would apply this, make sure it's above the subdivision. Um, if you have a machine tool, or excuse me, mesh machine, there's all X, you can just quickly symmetrize things, right? Generally speaking, in this case, it didn't look like it worked. There it goes. All right, so we can just quickly symmetrize that way with all X using that little gesture kind of tool, right? This looks a little funky in here, but you will get some inaccuracy. That's just the name of the game here. So uh, we're going to go ahead and just press E, S, scale this in, E, Z, pull that up. Also, we want to turn this off in edit mode. It's not such a big deal with some simple geometry, but when things get more complicated, you definitely don't want to have that on. And um, so we can go back in object mode, see it subdivided this like so. All right, E, S, E, Z. I'm not going to go all the way through the mesh. Um, doing the interior side of this probably wouldn't be that useful if you're going to have, um, you know, this little piece coming out of the, the bottom here, right? And so something like this could be useful. Uh, these edges like this, if you want to keep them a little bit sharper, you could try beveling them with um, like three sections like this, three edges, but um, control shift R and then hit E. You can do another type like this. Okay, and this is going to keep it sharper, basically. So we'll do that to all of these. Control Shift R and E. Hold Alt and Alt Shift to select loops like that, right? So now we have that already knocked out. You notice it's not a perfect circle, though. It's not a perfect cylinder. And so that's just something that's going to happen. I don't think there's any easy way to do this. Uh, it probably would have been helpful if we uh, did all this before we started doing those little bevels like that. But we can still do it. I'm going to do it all the way to the base here, like this. Okay, loop tools, circle. You can see it just kind of shifts it around a little bit. It's not a perfect sphere. It's not a perfect cylinder. Well, these are probably pretty close to perfect cylinders, but this is not going to be a perfect sphere no more, unfortunately. So you do lose some accuracy here, right? That's okay, though. All right, this is the big one. We have this cylindrical piece coming out the side here. Um, very simple and easy to do, believe it or not. It just takes a little bit of manual effort. So this vertex here, you're in edit mode, you can turn on vertex normals. Notice it has a vertex normal, right? All of them do, but this one is pointed out the way we want it to go. So we're gonna use that one. When you're using the machine tools add-on, you shift S, do cursor to vertex. Uh, machine tools by default will align um, the 3D cursor with rotational values to the normal of that vertex, which is what that blue line was. And so now if I press Shift A, create cylinder, and I'm gonna bump the radius here down, bump the depth down, something like that. And normally this is how you would create a cylinder. It would come in something like that at the 3D cursor. Uh, but we're aligned to the world. We can align to 3D cursor now. Boom. And we can do this number, right? So we change that radius amount however we see fit. And we can change the depth here as well. All right, so you can see already we're coming through the bottom piece here. Probably not a good idea. Uh, so the radius, we're going to go ahead and move it on down. And this might be a little bit more inaccurate, but once again, we're, we're pretty close to what we need, right? And so we want to carefully line this all up with this, this area here. We also need to make sure we're going to be able to join it together um, well. So 32 edges would be extremely rough to do here. It's not actually preferable. Uh, you're probably going to want to use something much lower to get started at least. And so like eight edges or eight verts um, is the preferred number here. Also where these edges run into here, normally you wanna have edges that run out in, in this kind of manner where some go out this way and some go up, right? Or they'll go left and down or right and down and get the idea, right? Okay, cause we're gonna actually Boolean this together. Uh, when you do Booleans, you wanna make sure you grab this face press F, just fill it in. We need a solid surface. 
and we created this in edit mode by the way so it's a um this object is actually part of it's all one object right now so we can select this by hitting l make sure we're not using seam shift click it so it's the whole object p separate selection and uh, we're going to turn that subdivision off subdivision off delete them but now we should be able to boolean these together we're going to use bool tools bool tool add-on comes with blender Control shift b is the menu for it uh, but we're going to be doing auto boolean so it's just permanent and it's fast here we can do a union join them together bam just like that um, we would have to move these vertices out towards this edge here using uh, the machine tools add-on that's not going to be such a big deal you'll notice down here it's extremely tight and this is actually a little bit problematic um, the way we did this you really got to be careful before you do that boolean but sometimes uh, little things like that can in fact cause quite a bit of problems uh, so I'm just going to scale this all down a little bit. Just uniform scale it down. Apply the scale. And so we have a little bit of a gap there. We don't overdo it. And so now we can go ahead and do that Boolean again. A union. Done. Like so. Now using the machine tools add-on, we can quickly go through this and clean it up by doing... Um, you can grab like a vertex, hold control, and do shortest path selection. Hold shift. Or control maybe sometimes it can be a little bit difficult but basically uh, merge with M at last okay if you have machine tools you can do um, the shortcuts for it which is a smart vert and smart um, edge and shift shift uh, one control one or one depends on how you have your hotkeys set up I use control one but it's one by default for smart vert so you can go around and clean things up Check them as you go along if you want. Sometimes you have doubles. Oh, on you. And so you want to check them. All right. And uh, once you do a half of this, because it's symmetrical, you can actually uh, just mirror it over. It's not a big deal. But you can see, like, this is pretty good. Just quickly mesh machine it over. And it should be good. Shouldn't have any issues here. Okay. Hopefully. Make sure there's no doubles at these sides here. All right, so this section, Alt-Click with Face Selection, Alt-Click, select the loop. Uh, we can do an inset, outset, all right? And that's going to push off this way, all right? Now, pay attention to this section here. You notice something? This is an e-pole. Usually, e-poles on edges are bad. Not always, but generally, you want to avoid that sometimes. And so when you do this inset, and then so press I and then O, you can do that outset. And uh, you can see it actually pushes the e-pole away. All right, so that's actually what you want there in that situation. And down here at the bottom, we might have overextended down here. And so there's two two ideas here: is that you can do a select more, and then just pull that down. Um, it might be a little less accurate, or you could just try to make this even tighter, which I don't think I would personally do because it's a little extreme, but could also do that number if you wanted to. Personally, I just pull them down. A little inaccuracy to me doesn't bother me as bad as um, having things way too tight anyways. So something like that might work out for me there. And um, so now we got some, some of this going on. It's pretty good. Let's loop cut here. When we did that outset, we generated these faces over here. You can actually select this whole area. X, limit, dissolve it. Um, just like that. X, limit, dissolve and selecting more and less all this fun stuff if you're not familiar with it and haven't watched my channel before select more less these are all on my mouse now or i'm actually using these shortcuts with a macro on my mouse but uh, edge loops edge rings boundary loops inner loop regions so that just lets me do everything i need to do like super fast so i can press e s push this in press e extrude in do something like that and now i can grab like this this section here do a boundary loop selection we got both sides of it if we needed it um, do something like that grab here boundary loop control b i might just bevel these um, but we can do other types as well so we can do like a um, control shift r and then hit e we can do this number as well an offset edge slide which is nice that makes things a little bit sharper generally speaking so you hit control shift r and then e will let you make it even basically okay and then this one i'm gonna bevel you can also set bevels to have shapes um, Let's do that again real quick. You'd set the shape amount here to like one. It does the same thing basically. The only problem is is that next time you bevel, you guessed it, it's already there. So I'm going to reset it back to 0.5. Believe it or not, bevels work really well at 0.7. 
but just keep that in mind. It's just uh, the way hard ops does things. So that's probably something you want to do. If you've ever had a chance to go look at the MX2 YouTube channel, that's Master Zeon's YouTube channel. He does like full on like crazy long tutorials on subdivision modeling and doing Boolean Ingon to subdivision and all kinds of other fun stuff. So go watch him and uh, enjoy. And uh, he's got some pretty good commentary along the way as well. So anyways, uh, we got this kind of shape going now. Let's go ahead and just make it more official. And we'll pull this out. Okay, just like that. We have this origin point here. So when we select this object, Shift S, do cursor to selected. We can do Shift A, create a um, quad sphere again. You can see it comes in like so. And I'm going to just scale it down real quick. This is a machine tools uh, tool, right? The quad sphere. Machine tools is free, guys. You can download it and put it to use. And um, anyway, so we get this kind of shape now, right? And in general, this is probably way in here, something like that. Because you can see, you don't see it poking out here, really, right? So it's something more like this. And so you'd want to line these things up and maybe like rescale these or whatever the case. You, you got to be a little bit particular on this section, but um, we can do this basically. And I personally, in these little kind of tight corners like this, like you're not really going to see if it's a perfect cylinder or something in here. It doesn't bother me. Just go straight to loop tools and circle it. And then I can just extrude it out. And then um, we can go ahead and do this. And we can do an inset, outset. So I and then O, we can do an outset. Okay. Sometimes when you use loop tools, this is going to be a problem you might face. Um, you do loop tools and you click circle. It does flatten things out usually. Um, in this case, it actually doesn't for some reason. I don't know why. I guess that single vertex messes with it. But uh, if you don't want it to flatten out, machine tools, you have to set it up. But on the modes pie, you have to set it up on quick favorites. I made a video about it before, but the modes pie is usually... A, has the uh, surface slide feature in edit mode so you can turn on surface slide there uh, surface slide is like a temporary shrink wrap basically we can move things all over the place and it tries to stay uh, attached to the surface but this also influences um, loop tools circle when you do that and a lot of times it holds the shape better and then you just turn it back off that's all you have to do there um, generally speaking uh, in this case we're getting some inaccuracy because you can see we did that number uh, but Generally speaking, you're always going to have inaccuracy at some point. Uh, so if you want to, you can uh, scale this in a little bit. Press E, Z. Oh, we got to turn surface slide off. I still have it on. E, Z, and then bam. Scale this out to whatever shape you need it to be. Just scale it out. Extrude it. Scale it. Extrude it. That fun stuff, right? I don't need this bottom face like this. So I'm going to Alt-A and use Machine Tools. Align bottom. Move it up. This little section here, I might want to actually straighten these out. Okay, you can see we got a pretty good result already. It's not that bad, huh? Control shift clicking will let you do like little uh, shortest path quad selections basically and fill the region or whatever. Um, but you might need to do border selections to do things like that. So you could do a bevel. Bevels will also push E poles and N poles off of the surface usually. So just keep that in mind. You can try using that if you want to do that as well. Um, so when this subdivides now, we'll do um, level two, level two here, shade smooth, shade smooth. Make sure you shade smooth, not auto smooth, so you get GPU acceleration while subdividing. And uh, that's going to work out pretty well there. Okay. And so this section here, even though we beveled it, I'm going to press, I'm going to bring it out a little bit and scale it down just so I can see it. Alt Z. Um, it's going to be hard to see it if it's like directly in line with each other. And um, so... We'll do that, hit E, Z, bring it all the way down. Okay. Up there, E, Z again. I'm going to scale this one in. Okay. Inset it. Set. Uh, technically, you don't have to do that. You could do uh, a bevel here. Or you could do um, an inset real quick, just a standard inset. And maybe do a Control shift r and E. Might be something you want to do okay because you're going to probably do that here control shift r e. probably want that up here too so turn off subdivision in edit mode control shift r and e again okay so we're going to get like basically perfection here um, happening right and so 
yeah, that's that pretty much right there. And let's create a nut real quick. The nut, we're going to work off of this. Shift A, create cylinder. Um, this cylinder, we want six sides. Okay, we're going to move it down. Just want to place it about center. Go into edit mode. We're going to work the top section here. We're not going to worry about the bottom, really. So with that in mind, we can do a select loops ring selection. We can bevel these. We're going to keep them pretty tight like this. Okay. And so for here, we can just do E and S and scale it in if we wanted to. We can do a loop tools. We can circle it. You can see when we circle this one, sometimes loop tools does act badly or behave badly. In this case, it misaligns everything, which is unfortunate. Uh, fortunately, you can come over here, click on angle, and click and drag. You can try to line it up like this. But hold control while doing this or control and shift. And you'll see we can actually kind of snap back in even the numbers here. So negative 2 degrees, for example, looks pretty close to on point. It's a little bit off, actually. Uh, you could tell by looking at some of the topology here. So this is one of the caveats of using loop tools circle. It, it can cause problems. And um, the most severe of circumstances, all you would have to do is create a, um, a new segment or a um, in edit mode, you would delete this face basically. And so you could come in here and say like you select this loop. This is where statistics come in handy a lot because you can see we have 18 vertices. So while in edit mode, we can hit Shift A, create circle, and we can make this 18 vertices. And we can uh, bump this down real quick, right? Sometimes you have to do things like this. It's unfortunate, but it's reality that um, it's just going to probably have to be done at some point. Forward slash to isolate, so everything else is out of the way. Uh, you should be able to loop select this, loop select this, Control E, bridge edge loops. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. It didn't. So we fill this first. And uh, let's see if we can get it to do it now. All right, there you go. So the bridge edge loops works now. You select those two edges. You have to fill it first. All right, so all kinds of fun things that can happen and occur in this now. We can have loop cuts. We could do bevels, maybe tight bevels, loose bevels, whatever. Um, when we subdivide this, we'll get this kind of result, not maybe what we want. And um, I might want to dissolve this edge now. Add a loop cut here. Let's turn it off in edit mode. These little sections like this, if I hit Shift G and select by area, we may or may not be able to select all of these by using area selection. Usually the threshold's wrong. And so you got to shift click and drag. And a lot of times you can select in little cheat ways like this, right? So this is fun, but the problem is, is that usually these have a little bit of curve to them, so you need loop cuts all the way throughout the shape. And unfortunately what that means is that circle we did earlier, is going to be um, not a circle no more. It's flattening out in those areas. So we need to loop tools and circle it. And you can see, once again, same problem, right? Let's change this to zero and see if that works. And it does, in fact, not work. And so this is what's going to drive you mad about loop tools, basically, is it just tends to do this sometimes. I think this is perfect, though, actually. This negative, is it negative three? No, three degrees is pretty close to perfect. I'm not, I don't trust it. Um, you do a loop tool circle again, you can see it just, yeah. And so, um, yeah, let's just go ahead. This is 30 vertices now. We'll just do another circle. I'll change it to 30. I know, annoying, right? It's just one of those things that happens, F. But once you get used to doing it, it's really not, really not that bad. So we can dissolve that. Uh, straighten it back up. Okay, I'm going to inset this real quick and inset and merge it center. So we have this going on. Cool. But now we can shift G, select these by area, and just drag them down a little bit, perhaps. Or maybe just these ones. All right, you can see it selects all that like so, but if I Alt Shift click this edge, it's the loop that it's deselecting. So I can pull those down and do something like that, create more of a bevel in this area as well. So it's a lot of fun doing things like that, but um, another interesting aspect, I'm going to scale this, just scale it out, is that sometimes these nuts, they have a little kind of rise to them right here. If I just hit Alt-S, I can scale along normals. So it's almost like insetting again, but not really. And we select that single vertex, select more. We can drop this down inside, maybe bevel this little area here, or we can chamfer it first. And then we can do a boundary selection and we can bevel these edges 
we can have it subdivide something like this so it looks a little bit more natural like a bolt um, and then if we have mesh machine alt x put it down to the bottom more than likely it's symmetrical something like this this is kind of a false interior here um, and the reason i did that just simply is because this is going to go down and around it right and so we need to um, probably work this shape out a little bit larger so we can actually see it hopefully just a little bit at least something like that and maybe these ones we can s shift z push them out sometimes these things you might run uh, remember there's an add-on called set flow the set flow add-ons real good for little minor adjustments as well even on things like this you sometimes you can just dissolve things though and um we're just trying to get this to look a little bit more dramatic here is what we're trying to do s shift z so you can play around with a lot of stuff like this here you could leave it open just technically as long as you don't see the uh the ends there there's no holes in there it's not really a big deal um, so you can do things like that i personally i don't care much for these being like this. I think I'm going to have to select all these, unfortunately, but I'm going to pull them down. Actually, we should be able to just slide this whole edge. Let's try it. GG twice. Let's slide it down. Let's do that and see what happens. Okay. So that's a little bit incorrect, but there's another way to do this topology a little bit more accurately, but it takes some time. And that's called solving, by the way. Like whenever you got to really work something, and you can run all type, different types of topology out. It's called solving. It's just something that you're going to do. Uh, specifically when you're finding like new objects to work on. It happens the most. But like there's a million ways to do bolts and nuts. And there's different types of nuts and bolts, obviously. Like some have this little rise right here. Like it rises up a little bit. Some don't. Um, some are completely flat. Whatever the case, right? Sometimes you might want to loop cut in there, keep it real tight. Select by area again. See, we got that going, but now that's a really high tolerance. Got to adjust it now. Might be able to do something like that. All right. Just little things like that. Okay, so we'll we'll go with that for now. Here it. Threading. Of course we aren't we aren't going to skip threading right you think it's really hard it's not really it kind of is because there's like 1200 different ways to do it but well, maybe not 1200 but there's at least a dozen different ways you can do um threading on a screw okay with subdivision and there's i think the fastest easiest way believe it or not is just using machine tools just insetting a little bit perhaps just so you have some um, holding edges going to machine tools turn on the add thread feature for machine tools and you able to do this number right and uh, this middle one here will adjust this like so there's other options in here you can tweak things in all sorts of different ways um, but you might want to increase the thread count something like that uh, the biggest problem is is machine tools is kind of geared towards boolean ingon workflow not necessarily um, quad modeling um, so little areas like this can get kind of tricky no lie like it, it might mess with your head quite a bit i'm gonna merge those two uh, and this is going to be technically wrong. It's not actually going to unwrap super well, but um, it's something I do personally because it just it works. Um, I'm going to do a knife cut here to uh, there, something like that. Uh, we could merge that all the way up potentially. Let's see how that subdivides. That does not look good. Uh, this is trying to create basically a little triangle here, all right? And so. If you ever look at a thread on a, a screw, they start ever so small, sometimes in the bevel of like the bottom section, right? And so it, they're really tough to do. These are actually really good learning projects. Um, I just did this a dozen times, but sometimes uh, when you use the tool, like I'm, I'm okay with one of these sides usually, and then the other side always gives me trouble. But um, generally, there's a way to run these out into quads that are triangles that behave extremely predictably but um, if you <laughs> are having trouble with it like I am right now it's uh causes a little bit of a problem but let's try that yeah you can see that just blew it apart basically so let's try doing a 
section like this. Let's see if that helps it a little bit. And it did not. Because it really wants to run to like right here. Might I might have had an extra in gun over here last time I did this. That's probably what it was. You see that's a it's not a quad, it's an in gun. But these are blown apart because there's two vertices. Let's merge those. Oh, maybe there's more than two. Ouch. Nope, that's just the uh piece doing that. Where does that end? Where does that go? All the way over to here? Dissolve it. Ouch. Okay. There's a double edge or something going on over here. It, they're really hard to spot sometimes, and these sharps aren't helping me right now, so I'm going to control E, clear sharps. The face or weird triangulation occurring because... Uh, it shouldn't be generating this error, basically, is what, what I'm seeing right now. It's not supposed to happen. Um, this is one of those really weird situations that, oh, there's a double over here that's not attached. Yeah, so sometimes weird things happen. I've had an issue with this tool also detaching mesh as of late. I'm not sure what does that. That's something I haven't had happen before, but it could be just part of my like process. Maybe I've changed it up by accident. I don't remember. But that's something else that seems to occur as of late that I don't ever remember really occurring before. There you go. You see how this kind of like collapses into a triangle here, super thin, and then this collapses back into a triangle, but it actually reroutes the flow all the way crazy around this thing. That's what makes it hard to unwrap But um, if you're going to UV map it. But this is probably one of the better results you can get on the topology here. It's just not technically accurate. All right, it's just usually it runs way up into here on a real screw. So and you can see these are separated as well. Um, so yeah, sometimes you you might just want to maybe just delete this face if that happens, and just bridge edge loops. You might get away with that. Yeah, look, that's much easier to deal with, huh? And this is going to be the easier side, I think, to do where you just run that edge out, you merge these two. And because of that, you can now, yeah, this is the easy side now. And you can just, bam. That's that same topology as the top, or it should be anyways. And, uh, yeah, see, a lot easier to handle on one side than the other. And it's just, yeah, it's just the way it is, I guess. I don't know. But not too bad once you do it a couple times. It, it's like one of those weird things, though. Like, if you don't do it a lot, you forget about it. It's just, that's how it is, and unfortunately, but... That's what happens. So uh, we can do the thread over here as well. You can see this thread blows apart in weird directions. I've had this issue as of late too. Uh, could be because of the subdivision. I'm not sure. But let's merge everything by distance. Just make sure everything's good. Loop tools, and we'll do machine tools, add thread. And you can see that's just, um, yeah, no, not what we want. So I'm going to separate this. I'm going to press Y, P, separate selection. So this is all its own piece now. I'm going to try it again. And tools, add thread. Not going to work out. Under item, make sure everything's good. Apply rotations and scales. Let's try it one more time. If it doesn't work, okay. I've had Blender have some weird errors before. So uh, we're going to do, I'm going to save it as ball joint uh, three. Oh, we already had it saved, didn't we? Yeah, so. I'm going to reset Blender. This is just a weird thing that can occur sometimes. It happens to some add-ons. It happens to some of the native Blender features. They just start getting like bad math or something. Really, really bizarre. Let's see if it works now. Loop tools, machine tools, add thread. No, <laughs> that's definitely not bad math then. Restore defaults. All right. So we have created a bug or it's bugged or I don't know. What if I rotate this real quick? Look at it. Oh, you know what? This might need to be filled solid. It might have to be. I'm going to recalculate everything inside. Inside. Okay. So we press F, fill all the faces. Let's see if that helps it. I hit Alt Z now, unfortunately. But there we go. Finally got the selection. Add thread. Whoa. Okay, I guess we is, we are not working today. But there must be something else going on. So let's try joining them again. 
merging by distance. All 16 there have merged. That was 8, so that should have been right. Let's delete that. Let's delete that. Merge again. I feel like there's a double or a, an extra edge or something in here. Oh, or they're not connected properly. So Alt, middle click, allows you to zoom into specific areas. And um, maybe, maybe I'm just going to dissolve all this real quick. See if I can't find any little issues and errors. I feel like there's something in here that's messed up. It could be on another part of the mesh too. Like it doesn't have to necessarily exist right here. Things like that can really mess things up. Just you can see that actually helped it a little bit, which is interesting. This edge, I guess. Something to do with the algorithm. Really bizarre. Let's do an inset. The only the only other option or the only other thing I could think of that might cause this is the simple fact that like um like you can see it's just behaving very badly. Um this one, the normals are backwards. The only thing that I think could really cause this is like one of the other tools I've used somehow interferes with it. And it like readjusts some kind of setting that this relies off of. And unfortunately that just really screws it up. Um, I do believe this one has created the wrong normals though. So this one's still usable technically. Um, we might have to increase the thread count here though. Um, so once we do this, we alt in recalculate um, outside. That should work. Oh, maybe, maybe that face is backwards or something back there. You see how it doesn't, the normals are all backwards. So let's delete that face for a sec. Gene tools add thread. Oh. All right, let's delete all of it actually. Let's just delete all these vertices. E, S, F, screwed in. Something about the technique here is messed up, so. Whoop, there you go. It worked that time. So bad face, I'm guessing. I don't know. Weird how that behaves, right? Um, so you can run into issues. Like this happens with like little things, nuances happen like this with loop tools or machine tools or um, screw threads. And so it's kind of nice that that popped up. You got to figure out how to problem solve it. It's almost always something to do, usually something to do with like another um tool settings or the topology is just technically wrong somehow there could be some like little um, nuanced detail that you just don't see like a double edge or the normals got messed up somehow or something something really small so you gotta sometimes reset blender see if that did it um, but whatever the case you can see here now um, we're kind of kind of back to normal I'm gonna extrude this out though um, this section here uh, we would probably have to, unfortunately, do an inset and then hit O to outset and just push it in a little bit. Uh, something like that. It's real tight, I know, but um, also we'll dissolve one of those edges on the outside from that outset. And um, yeah, it's just really weird nuanced uh, little issue, huh? But once again, we get to merge these. Uh, this one comes out as a quad. So I'm going to try doing this one like that. Let's see how it subdivides. These ones aren't usually as hard to do for whatever reason. They actually turn out pretty good looking, generally speaking. You want to make sure you shade it smooth, though, so we get that GPU acceleration. Also, this one, it is technically creating a triangle right here. Uh, let's dissolve that. Let's just move that one into there. Let's see what happens. That's extremely tight, but it I kind of like it. It's kind of not that bad. So if I was baking a high poly to a low poly, or something like that probably wouldn't bother me that bad. It's such a minor nuanced detail. Um, if you were doing like product visualization, that could potentially look pretty, pretty horrible though. So um, there's an actual better way of doing the topology that this is just like a cheater fast method i guess so you can see in this side once again 
We have this kind of thing going on here. Cut, cut, there we go. Resolve. Like I said, one side's easy, one side's hard, right? Now we have that going on. So we can, uh, Alt H, bring back, that was hidden. You can hide things with H, right? And then Alt H to bring everything back. And uh, so there we go. If you have a um, object space or world space material, you just throw it onto your object. You don't need UV maps with those. All right. So like I said, we were going to make the same thing basically. But uh, let's take a look at that material real quick just so you know how it's set up. And this material is running texture coordinate from object into a mapping. Nothing really here has changed. Uh, I'm using a PBR material. This is set up like Unreal Engine, except it's set to box and blend 0.1. So that gives us object space mapping, basically. And so we could do the roughness the same way. Box, blend, set to non-color. Normal, set to um, 0.1. Box, blend, 0.1, right? Uh, this is a DirectX normal, so you run it into an RGB curves, you select the green channel, and you flip this around. That's already flipped. It would have been the other way originally, going this way. Grab the little points, swap them. And so you can use DirectX normals inside of uh, Blender, run it to a normal map, send it out this way, non-color, non-color, and um, that's RGB here. Now, um, Strangely enough, this is just roughness. I thought I had it set up with a, an ORM type material, occlusion roughness, metallic packed texture, usually what you use in Unreal Engine. If that was the case, you do a converter and a converter separate color like that. And so rough red, roughness, red will be um, ambient occlusion, right? The red channel. So if you ever use Unreal Engine textures, or pack your textures for Blender, this is actually extremely efficient. Um, you could do a color mix RGB. Uh, let's get it going here. Mix RGB, like so. Run the ambient occlusion, which is on the red channel, into here, and you multiply it, and then it will blend into the base color. That's like baking your material, or baking your diffuse color, basically, is what it's kind of doing. Um, but uh, the green channel would be uh, roughness, so it would go here. Of course, we're not using a packed material, but if we were, I just want to show you how to set that up. And the blue channel would go to metallic, because that would be your metallic map. So, but basically, that's how you would set up Unreal Engine type uh, ORM textures to uh, set them up in Blender, anyways. You don't have to change anything on them, really. Just use it like that. Uh, in our situation here, I'll go ahead and uh, control X that. Control X that. We are not using it in that manner. We just have a roughness map. And so the metallic and everything is set over here. Just one. And uh, roughness is set with the materials. So, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. It's really easy to set up materials um, in this manner. Something simple like this, anyway. So, uh, but what that gives you is that same result. So you need a PBR material. Don't forget there's websites like ambientcg.com, which has tons of different metal materials and stuff like that. Um, and so you can set up some kind of configuration like this. And you won't have to UV map it because it's object space, right? Um, sometimes the scale will influence how that looks. So you might have to press Control A and apply your scale on certain things. You can see it'll start to um, actually use the same, same kind of scaling here for the most part. If not, there's one additional thing I want to point out, is that you can create an empty plane axis. You can use this as your scale object. So for the material itself, notice you have object, you can use the empty. Uh, empty 01 in this case. The other one was the reference. So if I take this empty and scale it up, I can change the resolution. Or I can rotate it and do all kinds of nonsense, right? Uh, it might cause some stretching and some weird stuff to just scale it usually. Works best. So if we want a little bit larger of a pattern here, we can do that. Uh, one last final touch here is if you've noticed my UV editor and everything is in sync with each other, there's an add-on called uh, Set Sync or whatever. I forgot. Synchronize Displays. Let me, let me look this up real quick. Synchronize Workspaces. It's on Gumroad. It's really good. Just Google it. Sync Workspaces. 
this was created by uh, uh, Michael, I guess. So really good because then you get configured to do that. Sometimes it can make it a little bit harder to use Blender in some ways, but generally speaking, it makes everything a lot easier as well. Uh, when it comes to lighting, I'm using rendering, not material preview. Um, scene lights. I actually have some lights I usually uh, toss into my scene, right? So, and then I use the um, the HDRI instead of scene world, so you uncheck that one, right? So now if we were to go ahead and add some lights in here, which is like spotlights or whatever, and we are actually upside down right now. We can add spotlights, we can change their settings, like maybe we want to make it red. Turn the, the volume or the, the amount up. Okay. We can do things like this when it comes to rendering. Okay. Maybe make it a little bit more orange. We could turn the world strength down. So we can we can do some pretty cool things. Go to your render settings for EV, turn on ambient occlusion, turn on bloom, change turn on screen space reflections. Um uh, turn on different shadow settings here. But um the radius for bloom is usually too high. It's like six or eight the by default or something like that. Uh so just like two or three I think is really all you need, max. And like one maybe even. But two works out okay. You could turn the uh intensity down as well. So you get some results like that going. Now I also have my viewport set at one, otherwise it flickers. Uh, on a single object, the flickering is not really that bad. But when you're doing like environment art, the flickering is crazy. So uh, press one, and it'll just have these hard shadows for now. But when you do a render, just do like 16. And so if you want to do a preview render, you turn this off entirely. Um, let's do a quick test. Viewport render, and you can see all the extra stuff went away. So that's not too bad. You can also set things like viewport look to like high contrast. That's fun. Turn shadow quality up or use um, like high quality normals under performance. I think it's under that, which is up here. Yeah, high quality normals. We're not using indirect lighting for this one, but that's if you're doing, uh, usually if you want indirect lighting, you know, like bounce lighting, you need that. But uh, that involves setting up iridescence volumes and stuff. So. Yeah, I wasn't going to do the rendering section, but I figured why not. Yeah, bright orange obviously is too much. So like off-whites are usually pretty good. Sometimes you can use like blues or whatever. Slight tints to the uh, the light setup, right? And we can't see it no more, so let's turn this back on. Move it around. Make it larger. Uh, we can adjust the things on here as well, such as like the overall size and if it blends softly or not. Up to us. And so, right. So viewport render settings here matter. If you want to do a nicer looking render, you can change it to 64. You turn all this back off. You can hit Control Alt Space, and that'll show you a full full screen. This is what it's going to actually render the Control Alt Space version of. So like um, it's upside down. Let's go ahead and just select everything and rotate it 90 degrees this way. I don't, I don't think I quite hit 90 degrees, but usually you can rotate the whole thing 90 degrees. Um, my light is upside down, I guess. <laughs> did I put it in there upside down? Yeah, I did. All right, let's put it up here then. There we go. A little bit dark. Let's turn that strength back up on the environment. It's a good idea to kind of like match the environment lighting as well a little bit. You don't have to be perfect, but um, just a little bit. It's also an add-on um, that lets you spin the HDRI image in the background uh, by holding Control and Alt clicking. That's um, if you look for the UV Toolkit add-on, uh, you probably won't. The UV Toolkit two add-ons not for sale anymore. I think, at least it wasn't last time I checked. But the um, the original one was, which gives you the um, the pie menu here, at least for UV mapping, which is nice. Uh, but there's the guy that made that is his name's Alex, I guess. He also has um, this spinning HDR thing, which is really good. So just keep that in mind. And um, all right, so we got all this kind of stuff set up. Let's turn it back off. Control Alt Space. Just position it if we want to render this thing, right? Let's render it like. Uh, like this. Oh, one thing I wanted to talk about real quick. 
is let's say this is a joint this nut we want to follow this so we control p parent object keep transform in that order right so this is your active element um, so now what ends up happening is you rotate this it's, they stay aligned basically which is nice okay but the um the thing here is like watch this area here this was supposed to be a sphere right um, it's not a sphere no more it's just slightly off okay and so this can cause a little bit of a problem depending on what you're working on but personally i don't think it's such a huge deal um, because you're not going to see that for the most part so it's not that big of an issue on this particular model but could be potentially in some and also it, this one happens to um, see if i can select the right pieces here all of this stuff here let's forward slash a sec I'm having a hard time selecting things. Okay. All of that, you'll probably never see this. So if you want to just save some faces, you can delete it. All right. Depending on depending on uh, what's going on with your project or whatever, I guess. Because you can't really bend this further than that, right? Like it kind of stops there. Like you'll never see beyond that point. So no point to having it. All right. So control space, shift. You can hit Z. Go over to render view. And Blender crashes, of course. <laughs> Lovely time to crash. I think I got bad memory. It's going bad. That's what's happening, I think. But anyways, um, I got some extra sticks laying around. I could throw in there and check it later. But um, Autosave, by the way. Autosave is pretty, pretty good. You go by date modified and then the newest one loaded up. Let's try that again. There we go. We're back at we're back in business now. Um, believe it or not, it'll save back where you were as well. So ballpoint, a uh, ball joint, uh, ballpoint, <laughs> ball joint three. Just save it. We'll be okay. Um, I've rotated it though, so it's all kind of like off-centered axis and everything. So don't save it when you do that. Um, but regardless. I guess that might have been a Blender bug. If I could repeat that, that might actually be just a bug. You find little things like that every now and then as you start playing around with Blender more. But well, my, I think my render settings have changed. But basically, I want to just line this up. I don't prefer pressing F12 and using cameras generally. It takes too much time to set up, in my opinion. I can do this relatively fast. And um, I, ha I can avoid doing the whole camera part. And if I don't need like depth of field, then this is good for me, right? So I can just save this real quick. Um, view, turn this off. And if we viewport render this, we should be centered because we went off that original one. At least close. Sometimes you do have to tweak this a little bit, but you could select everything and then just like press F and do that number, but um, no, it just really just depends, I guess. I'm also rendering these, rendering with EV in this setup. I'm doing, I've set my resolution to 8K, but I'm setting it at 50% as well. So it does 4K. And you can see how fast a 4K image comes out, right? It's like two seconds. I don't even know if it tells you the time anymore, but yeah. It's like two seconds. It's really quite good. And um, these are excellent preview renders, in my opinion. I was, the whole idea of this setup was to try and get. Um, EV to somewhat behave a little bit more like Marmoset. Because um, I want Marmoset, but I really like buying things when they put them on sale, and I'm so I'm waiting for them to put a discount code on because I'm cheap like that, but that's what's going to end up happening at some point. So, um, you know, now we have a uh, ball joint render. There you go. That's what happened. We made the full progress through that whole thing. So... Yeah, take your time with it. Uh, play around with the topology. You can try different kind of setups and arrangements of different edges and things like that. It can make it look better. It can make it look worse. It can all kinds of things in the middle, perhaps. Um, there might be more accurate ways of doing things, but generally speaking, this ain't no big deal. Like it's um, once you understand some of these tools, like yeah, it takes some time. Like you could do a Boolean ingon workflow version of this really fast. Um, generally speaking, but you're not going to have just, you're not going to be able to just like zoom in on it like this, right? Like it's just not going to happen. 
And if I need more resolution, you see that object space mapping, you see how it blends? That was that point 0.1 blend there. That's what it's doing. So, I mean, I can really crank this resolution. So if we didn't need to get like super close to this thing for whatever reason, we can get it really tight like that. That's that's ridiculous, right? And um, yeah, so there you go. That is um, that is how you can utilize these tools to make all this happen. Hope you enjoyed this video. I learned quite a bit in it. I try to pack these things full of information and just a little bit more more advanced ones. A lot of guys are pretty happy with the beginner tutorials from like Blender Guru and stuff like that. So. After talking to some people, they were wanting more stuff that was a little bit more complicated. But even Blender Guru has some really good advanced uh, kind of tricks in his tutorials. Specifically, like doing, um, there's, he did a video on a house that I'm still uh, kind of impressed with because it's talks about more or less masking and painting inside of Blender, like blending your layers inside of Blender, which is real good. Uh, so do check out, you know, some of the more known tutorials out there, and then um, check out other artists as well. It's, it's always like a trick about doing tutorials or teaching anything like this is that just because one guy teaches one way doesn't mean it's going to resonate with you. And so if I teach this way and it doesn't really resonate with you, it just, just people learn differently from different people. At least that's how I've always been. So, But I did want to make these videos in this manner because um, I have a little bit of a different a teaching methodology behind the way I like to do things. So little bit you know just more blunt not so um, pre-rehearsed and things like that so if problems do arise you can see when they pop up how they go and all that fun stuff and you can see like really how these kind of things take place I've already did this model you know like three or four times basically uh, just playing around with different topologies and on top of that you know I've done tons of nuts and bolts already so this is nothing new and it's um Every time it presents a unique challenge. And so I just want to point that out. So when you see some of these tutorials and you feel like you're getting left behind by some of these artists, a lot of them, yeah, they know a lot of stuff, um, but there's like a certain cap to the speed you can work at, especially while trying to problem solve little issues and bugs and stuff. So you have to be paying attention to those kinds of things. And so like uh, this was the screw thread tutorial, right? You can see I had that different kind of setup there going on. This one actually looks really nice, but uh, it's very broad. And the way we did it was a little bit different. So there's all kinds of different topology you can do, right? It's just, it really just depends on what you prefer at the end of the day. What's going to work well with your UV maps is another thing. If you're going to use UV maps, you can see we didn't do that. So uh, but a lot of little things that uh, come into consideration. And I was looking for um, a nuts and bolts uh, little setup here real quick, just to kind of show you that anyway. I don't think I'm going to find it. It doesn't look like it's in here. It might be in my library folder. No, it's not. It's not. Oh, maybe it is. Nah, it's not in here. Never mind. That's a different thing. Let's just search for it, I guess. I guess it doesn't do subfolders. I don't usually use this search feature, but... Tutorial files. Maybe I'm in the wrong folder. Blender sometimes rearranges things based not off names. I don't know when that occurs either. It's really annoying though. Sometimes you gotta click that little name section up there. The rest of this video, we're just gonna be pretty much hanging out and uh, looking for this file, I guess. Jeez. You see, this is like a 
a different kind of sub it's basically the same topology we used but it has a flange to it right something like that that's pretty interesting that's not realistic by the way it just works out well that's all so go down the list here on some of the other ones I just threw all of my stuff into one folder so I could go through it all little by little. And, um, I'm kind of regretting it now. That's what's happening. A lot of these are half-finished projects, and I wanted to clear my library out, basically. And only have things that were finished in it from here on out. So a lot of these things got to get finished and then um, pushed back into the library, basically. And that's part of part of just what I want to do personally. Have everything real neat and organized from here on out. This is something I've been working up to for a little while, but I've been doing a lot of like practice runs and blockouts and things. Uh, this is a bolt factory sub D example. Oh, yeah, the bolt. There's an add-on that comes with Blender called Bolt Factory. Uh, really good, but you you can subdivide those bolts, which is really wild. It's just, it's not so simple and straightforward. But it's, it's one of those things I played with. I'm telling you, I've done a bunch of this stuff already. It's ridiculous. I still don't know where they're at. Screw and bolts. There it is. The search worked this time. <laughs> Screw and bolts. That's why I got find it. I'm looking for nuts and bolts. This is like a bunch of the stuff I've already modeled basically when it comes to that, right? Playing around with different sub D type setups for different types. Um, screws and hex screws and you get the idea, right? Doing you know, dowels and pins and whatever, wing nuts. So you get the idea, right? So playing around with these shapes, like this is even a modular thread, which I don't know if I will ever need that necessarily, but look, um, if I snap this, like so <laughs> at the top or the bottom that's the bottom it'll snap <laughs> into place like so here's a thread it can snap into place something like that anyways was the way it was meant to be used but i don't know why it's not snapping now oh, i guess it snaps at a different level Well, it used to snap. I don't know what happened to it. What did I do wrong? It snapped to the grid, too. Right. So, they'll snap to each other with vertices, I guarantee it, but whatever the case. And so, um, I'll do some more spherical, cylindrical stuff in the future, for sure. Um, there's a lot that can go into it, especially when you're trying to do, like, things that oppose your um, your topology or your flow. It really comes down to just a couple things. Edge flow, having the ability to snap to your surface or using the surface slide of machine tools is extremely useful. Um, but you can kind of like transition your topology and have it flow in different directions. Uh, machine tools being pivotal to this kind of stuff because um, even something like using the um, smart edge feature, uh, you can rotate edges Right, so you can do things like this, and this is still quads. It's ridiculous some of the stuff you can do, right, with uh, machine tools. You you just can't simply rotate things that fast um, with Vanilla Blender. It doesn't happen. You can see like loop cuts now behave completely erratic almost, but it's crazy. And um, so a lot of fun though being able to do things like that. And you see it just kind of didn't work out over here or there. Let's flatten those. You can see it works really well on flat faces, right? Because that's a big old, basically, um, big old uh, quad there, right? And I got another quad there, another quad there. It's all quads. And I loop cut it. We get something like that. Get two loop cuts. Get something like that. These little tricks are the kind of things that will extremely, help extremely a lot. Like they just 
Like, why would you, you would never think like, oh, I need a, uh, an e-pole here, right? It's just, I'm going to need this really crazy topology, maybe. You would never think of that. Um, now, preferably, don't do that. If there's better ways of doing it, do it. Because you got to think about, like, you need flow up and down, maybe, or left and right, not zigzags. These can be harder to UV map, unwrap, and bake. Uh, but sometimes it's it's just something you can get away with. You'll get a you'll get a feel for it when you try to unwrap it. You'll be like, oh yeah, that was a bad idea or that was a dumb idea. But I'm just trying to demo here the idea that you can do absolutely insane nonsense, um, like spinning edges with machine tools. Like you, some of these guys out there are constantly saying like, I don't like add-ons. I don't want to pay for add-ons. I don't want to. Machine tools is free, first of all. It's not about paying for add-ons. There's just a couple of advanced features if you want them that you uh, can pay for. But like even hard ops, box cutter, kit ops, or whatever, they all have benefits to them. And if it doesn't benefit you personally, then don't use it, obviously, right? If you don't want to pay a dime for Blender, that's fine. Um, you want to pay less than 100 bucks and turn Blender into a monster workhorse for freelancing or, or modeling or whatever in general? Do it. That's what you should do. That's absolutely what you should do. And so I don't make a dime off of, uh, you know, some people have said this in some of my comments. I don't make a dime off of add-ons, guys. Like, I do not, um, I don't do the uh, affiliate marketing. So if you see an add-on being promoted, it's just a, it's just a, something I use, right? I don't, I don't make money off this YouTube stuff. I don't care about it. Not that much, anyways. I, I got other goals. So I want to do other things. So, anyways, uh, with all that in mind, I hope you enjoyed this one. You learned a lot. Get to play around with some of these tools a little bit more. Explore them. You know, really push yourselves if you want. You know, if you don't want to, you don't have to. You can just laxy daisy doodle through Blender for I don't know a decade. It wouldn't matter. It's it's a hobby. It's fun. That's all. That's all you need to do at the end of the day is just uh, have fun with it, right? So anyways, I got to check you guys out in the next video. Hope you enjoyed. Take care, all right?